What's going on YouTube? Here today to teach you guys how to run all your combine and camp numbers. We're gonna be going over the 40 yard dash setup, how to run it effectively. We're also gonna be going over the three cone or the 5 the L drill and the broad jump. You guys need to master these numbers. I can't tell you how many athletes I see who are very good athletes who just suck at these combine numbers. You'll never get an offer unless you can run a decent 40 time and do these drills effectively. Your film is everything, but at the same time too, coaches wanna use your film to get you to camp to see if you can compete, if you can run. So let me show you how to perfect these numbers. You're gonna to wanna to send this video to a friend too to make sure that you guys can work together on this. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, dropping crazy videos every single week. Without further ado, let's get into how to perfect your camp and combine numbers. I'm gonna show you guys how to perfect your 40 yard dash and turn college recruiters heads at camp this summer. So to start the 40, what you wanna do, is you wanna take every inch you can with your toes to the top of the line. Immediately what you're gonna do, and you need to do this before camp, don't do this at camp, but you wanna test what is actually your power leg and what's your off leg. So what I like to do is close your eyes, get way up on your toes and then lean forward. Whatever foot comes out first is gonna be your off leg. And I say this because when you're in your 40 stance, I know this is my power leg just because my off leg just came out. When you get off, that's gonna be the exact stance you're in, the, the stance that you just fell into. So this is gonna be my off leg, this is gonna be my power leg. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take the heel of my off leg, the leg that just came out, and put it to the heel of my power leg. Should look like this, and then I'm just going to rotate backwards. The next step is I'm gonna take the heel of my power leg, the leg that stayed back when I just did that test, I'm gonna put the heel of that right into the middle of my off leg and then rotate the toe again. And the last step for setting up the footwork is I'm gonna take that heel of that off leg again, this one, and put it into the heel of that power leg and rotate the toe. Now I have my footwork perfected for this drill. Now that I have my footwork perfected, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just make sure that your toes are nice and dug into the turf for a great get off. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is just go right down onto your off leg's knee. Create a really good shin angle here because this is pivotal to running a great 40 and having a great get off. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch out a little bit here, keeping my toes in the ground and really create a really nice shin angle on that drive leg. So as I stretch out, I'm just gonna make sure without compromising the shin angle, I'm just gonna make sure that my toes are nice and sturdy in the ground. And then I'm going to walk my hands and notice how my thumbs are. My thumbs are pointed vertical here, like a thumbs up. I'm gonna walk my hand back to the top of this line. As I come back, the last thing you wanna do is raise your butt up and lose this shin angle. Use the shin angle you just created and without lifting your butt too high, as soon as you start lifting your butt and that shin angle starts coming up, you're lifting your butt way too high. So as you're loading, you wanna lift your butt to the point where it's just starting to move this shin, but it doesn't move it. And now I am in a spring-like phase with all the power in my lower body, specifically majority in this power leg. So as I'm in this spring-like phase, the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is take the hand to my power leg and lift it up so my thumb is right near my back pocket. I'm telling the coach getting the time that I'm ready to go. So as soon as I start, I wanna lean forward ever so slightly. And as soon as I feel like I'm about to fall forward, then I wanna drive out and begin this 40. <laughs> And this is the full fast version of the setup. So taking my toes right to the top of the line, going off leg, heel to heel, power leg, heel to midfoot, off leg, heel to heel, digging my toes in, dropping down to my off leg knee, stretching out, again, digging my toes in, make sure I'm not compromising that shin angle, then loading up into this spring-like phase, keeping a good shin angle, not getting my butt too high in the air, keeping my head down, my chin tucked, I'm gonna take that power leg arm right to my thumb pocket and as soon as I start feeling like I'm gonna fall on my face leaning forward I'm out now the most important part of running the 40 is the first 10 yards you want to make sure that you're low not popping up too quick and you also want to have a low foot recovery so as I'm driving out I want to make sure my head is staying low and you're gonna do this by having a really powerful vertical get off covering a lot of ground here so my first step boom is pretty far out this is gonna ensure that I'm slow and not too far out to the point where I'm gonna fall on my face. Practice is everything. Don't just go run your first 40 at a camp. It's not going to go your way. And as I'm running, I wanna make sure I have really good arm action, thumb to pocket, thumb to nose, 
and I want to make sure I'm not picking my feet up too far and wasting a lot of space here. I want to have a good low foot recovery pulling that foot through. And then as I'm accelerating through the first 10 yards, I'm staying low. And then after that first 10 yards, my body is naturally going to start coming up, getting in that top end speed phase. Now, as I'm driving through, my chin is still tucked. Once I get to about this 20 yard marker, I'm gonna lift my head up. And now I'm just thumb to pocket, thumb to nose, really pulling forward, make sure I'm driving through my hips, hitting max top end speed. And the key here is making sure that you're staying on a straight line. So if you're at a camp, make sure you can find a line and make sure you're not running and weaving side to side and wasting too much space during your run. This is gonna severely impact your time. In the last part of this drill here, you can have a sprinter's finish if you want, if you feel comfortable with that, just putting your head through the line. I would recommend sprinting 50 yards just to ensure that you are not letting up through this back half, which a lot of people end up doing. They think they're sticking their head out, getting a good time, but what they're actually doing is stopping their stride, slowing them down. So if you feel comfortable doing that, you can. Another important part, guys, is when you're running, you wanna be loose. You don't wanna be very tense trying to get your best time. This is gonna slow your 40 time down. That old analogy, like running with a potato chip is a great way to think about it. Just be loose, just breathe. And now I'm gonna show you guys the full 40 yard dash. This is how you perfect the 5-10-5 or three cone drill. The reason why they call this the 5-10-5 or three cone drill is because when you start, you're gonna be running five yards followed by 10 yards followed by five yards or three cone drill. Obviously there's three cones here. I'm gonna show you how to perfect this drill and get the best time possible. So to start the 5-10-5, I wanna walk up to this cone and I wanna straddle the center line. Then what I wanna do is I wanna take the foot to the direction which I'm going for this situation. I'm going to my right first. I wanna take that foot and I wanna drop it back. My toe should be in line with my opposite heel. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna drop down into an athletic stance, bending at the knees, bending at the waist, and also bending at the hips. Then the next thing you wanna do is take the hand to the direction you're going. I'm going this direction. I wanna put it on the very edge of this line. I want to take every inch I can get here. So in this stance, hands going down to the very edge of this line. And then the opposite hand, which is not in the ground, is going to go right into your back pocket. Don't put it in your back pocket, but make sure your thumb is right where your back pocket is so that when you start, you can get a really, really aggressive push laterally and really swing with that arm. So the last step, I approach parallel feet, dropping the foot back to the direction I'm going, getting an athletic stance. This heel is probably gonna come off the ground, that's fine. We'll really be driving off that foot here in a second. So squatting down, taking the hand to the direction you're going, putting it down on the line, putting it right on the edge of the line. If they make you put it in the middle, that's fine. Put it right in the edge of the line, take the opposite thumb, put it in your pocket, and then before you start, I want you to really load on the leg to the direction you're going. So this off leg, load 90% of your weight onto that leg. And then right before you start, this is on you, there is no set go. So on your movement, they're timing you, so loading that leg and then doing a huge lateral push here to start. Boom. And now the key to the first part of the 5105 is staying square. We don't wanna turn all the way here because we're only going five yards. The cadence for this footwork is in your stance, it's going to be a quick and long, powerful lateral step, a lateral crossover. My shoulders are still square here. And then you're going to get into almost like a skip shuffle. So skip, shuffle, and then you're gonna jump and then you're gonna do a hockey stop right on this line. So I'm in my stance, I'm starting violent lateral, skip hop, and then as I approach this line, I'm gonna jump into this line, boom, and touch the very edge of this line. See how my foot and my hand are touching the edge of the line. Don't wanna go over that's wasting space and wasting time. This is something you need to perfect. If you're wasting time, then you're not getting the best time possible and you're wasting out on putting a good time in front of these coaches. So full speed, this is what the first part of the drill is gonna look like. <laughs> touching the very edge of that line with both my hand and my foot. So as I touch this line, now I'm going to be sprinting 10 yards. I did the first five, now I'm doing 10, then sprinting five back. This next 10 yards is actually going to be a sprint. So as soon as I hit this line laterally, 
I want to turn push and now I'm sprinting another 10 yards to the opposite side. So for me, it's five steps. So I'm here and then I'm one, two, three, four, five. And now I'm gonna get right back lateral into that crossover skip hop and doing the same thing here. Skip hop, touching the very edge of that line with my foot and my hand, a really good bend, a really good lean, and then just accelerating full sprint back to the other cone. We only need to go five yards, but I say sprint 10 to make sure that you have a really aggressive and really explosive get off here and making sure that you're not lackadaisical through the finish line. So this is what the second part of the drill is gonna look like. Touching this line, one, two, three, four, five, skip hop, boom. Head down, accelerate through the finish line. And this is what the full cadence of the drill is and then we'll do the drill full speed. So the fast cadence of this drill, straddle the line, drop the foot to the direction you're going, squat down, take the hand to the direction you're going, put it on the edge of the line, thumb into the back pocket, really leaning onto that off leg. As soon as you feel ready to go, going crossover, skip hop, touch, touch the very end of the line, sprint one, two, three, four, five, skip hop, touch the very end, head down right through. Let's see this drill full speed. And that is how you perfect the 5-10-5. So now we're gonna perfect the three cone or the L drill. It's been brought to my attention that the three cone drill that I just called the three cone drill, it's pro agility or 5-10-5. But now I'm gonna show you how to perfect the three cone drill or the L drill. So the reason why this is called the L drill is because it's shaped like an L. And the idea of this drill is you are going to sprint from a 40 stance. You're gonna to touch five. You're gonna to come back. You're gonna to touch five. Now you're gonna come around this cone and then figure eight around this one, all the way back around, driving flat right through this line. And now there's a lot of controversy behind this drill. Some coaches, some college coaches make you touch the line with the same hand. But if you can, I would recommend touching the line with your left hand and then with your right hand so you don't have to turn your back. But some college coaches are going to make you touch with the same hand. So they're gonna say, you can only touch with your right hand. So you're naturally touch with your right. You're going to have to turn your back to touch with your right again. And a lot of people, again, on short form are gonna say, that's not how you do this. I'm gonna show you the way I would do it if I were you and I'd rather you make a mistake doing this than having to actually turn your back because it wastes a lot of time on the drill. So we're gonna go left, then right hand to make sure that we're here and then here, not fully turning our back, wasting a lot of time. So to start this drill, we're gonna get into our 40 stance. At least I like to get in my 40 stance. It doesn't have to be perfect. Getting down up in my stance here. I'm gonna touch with my left hand, then I'm gonna touch with my right hand. I'm in my stance coming up. It's on me again. This is letting the timer know that I'm ready to go. Driving off, staying really low again skater hop touching the very end of the line with my left going back touching the very end of the line with my right now this drill can be flipped so it would be right left versus left right then accelerating through here the key is to be super tight about these next cones so the second part of the drill the key is to be super tight about these next cones so i want to have a super tight turn here with a good breakdown and i want to have a super tight turn here not wasting too much time getting around this cone as well and the key to getting around this cone is to keep your hands and your feet going a lot of people what they do is they're here 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 getting stuck in the mud wasting so much time this is what holds people back in the drill so work on this part of the drill work on the whole drill but keep your feet going stay low and get around this cone in as little steps as possible but as little fast steps boom 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 i'm gone so as i'm figuring around this cone fast hands fast feet the next thing i want to do is approach here and I do want to have a good breakdown around this cone, guys. I don't want to finish way out there because I didn't break down and get tight down this cone, but I also don't want to have a full stop breakdown to accelerate again. So you need to put your foot in the ground, outside foot, snap over that chest, and drive down as flat as you can. I don't want you guys to finish out here when you started the drill out here. You're just wasting time. Just make sure on that last cone you have a really good breakdown. And now I'm going to show you guys this drill full speed and exactly what it's supposed to look like. <clears throat>
So that last rep was not my best time because my feet got stuck in the mud and I could feel it because my full foot was in the ground going around this cone. Right here, I could feel from my toe to my heel in the ground and that's not what you want to do. You want to break down, get on your toes and swing your hips and keep your feet going. So when you get around this cone in the three cone or the L drill, it's snapping like a wide receiver, leaning over the cone, throwing your hips around. Don't keep your hips this way like I just did. Because what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna try to get a better position and get around this cone with your upper body versus your lower body leading you. So my upper body just led me around that cone so it was slow versus me coming in, snapping down, cha-cha-cha, and my lower body leading, my upper body following. So I'm gonna do that again and I'm gonna see if that actually works. Just coaching myself here a little bit little intermission on how to perfect the three cone, the L drill. Let's see if it works. Yeah, so that naturally felt just a little bit better, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Hard to coach myself, but it's just important having body awareness so that you guys can perfect this by yourself. But that is how you guys are going to perfect the L drill or the three cone drill to really impress scouts at summer camp this summer. So an absolute cheat code to jumping a farther broad jump, if you're confident with your broad jump, don't go to a camp and do this if you're jumping seven feet, but if you're a nine, 10, 11 foot guy on broad jump, what you need to do is go to camp and right before you jump, tell the coach to point out your max number. Because what this does to your brain is it tells you, okay, I know I can jump that far. Don't tell them to point out 12, you're just gonna embarrass yourself. But if I know I jump a 10-5, I'm gonna say, hey, mark out a 10-6. Then he's gonna see it and I'm gonna see it and I'm gonna say, okay, I know I can jump to that line. So if I know I can jump to that line, I'm sure I can get a couple extra inches. Versus just going in, not having any idea where the tape is and just jumping and being like, that's where I landed. I, I had a horrible number because I didn't see where my best jump was. But it's a confidence level and it's knowing that you can jump that far. If you're really feeling confident, say like an extra inch or two so that you can really get a good jump like this. Cool. So approaching the broad jump, every camp's gonna be different. Some camps are gonna say, put your heels on the top of the line. Some camps are gonna say, put your toes on the top of the line and then measure your heels. I don't understand it, but it is what it is. Everybody at the camp is doing the same thing. So you might not jump your best number, but you will jump better than everyone else if you're well prepared. So no matter how they tell you to set it up, most of the time it's gonna be, take your foot to the top of the line, going shoulder width apart here, not too wide, not too narrow. And the idea is, is to prep yourself for this jump. You're gonna go two preps and an actual jump. So as I'm here, I'm up tall. I wanna raise way up tall, fight my hands, push my hands through the ceiling, and then drive up onto my calves, onto my toes. So one, and then you're gonna find your snap down spot, which isn't too low. You're not gonna get a good jump out of that. It's like 90 degrees parallel is perfect. I'm gonna be snapping in that 90 degree parallel. My thumbs are going from way up tall to right into my pockets, because I wanna jump up and out, and I want my hands to carry me. If you can throw your hands up and out when you do this jump, you have a way better time. Your hands need to lead your lower body on this one. So I'm gonna do two reps of stretching and loading, and then on that third one, I'm actually going to actually jump, putting it all together. I'm just stretching out now, feeling the spots, then that third one should be ready to go. Feet shoulder width apart. I'm up tall, one, snap down. Two, snap down. Three, snap. Drive and jump, and make sure you guys really get a full extension with your hands. Again, you want your hands to pull up and out and then snap into place with your lower body. Make sure you guys stick the landing. Another tip is if you do jump shorter and you do feel like you're gonna fall forward, that means that you could get more on your jump. So if you land and you feel like you're gonna fall forward, just drop right to your knees and then get a re-jump in. It's not the best look, but it's better than jumping a short time. I'd rather you get another opportunity to jump than to get something six inches less than what you normally do because you just had a bad jump and your feet didn't get underneath you. So if you're gonna fall forward, then fall forward, get another rep. So again, full speed, approach the line, shoulder width apart, 
If you want to be elite, tell the coach where you want to mark. 10 feet, he's going to mark 10 feet. Up tall, one, two, <clears throat> snap it into place. You guys should land in a nice solid base if you got the best jump possible. And again, if you feel like you're gonna fall on your butt, then just naturally fall on your butt and get a re-jump. And that's how you're gonna jump a perfect broad jump and catch coaches' attention at college camps this summer. And that is how you guys are gonna perfect all your combine numbers. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel because Look, the bottom line is there's not that many people subscribed. There's a million high school football players a year. There's only 7,000 subs right now. So that means 7,000 people out of a million are getting insane value. And not to mention some of those guys who are subbing are either younger or older college guys. So if you guys sub, you're gonna have a really good chance of getting a good extra push on everybody else. And make sure you guys check out a five-star football package. I promise you I can drop your 40 by 0.2 seconds in just three weeks for that package. Get your bench pressed up by 30 pounds, squat up by 30 pounds, clean up by 20 pounds in just three weeks. So make sure you grab one. There's one for every position. There's nothing like it on the market, not even one single thing. But always make sure, guys, to keep Jesus Christ first. God bless you guys. Good luck. Prepare hard. You'll be ready. Salute.